Hello, this is meteorologist Andrew Moore with a weather and climate briefing that will cover what occurred during the month of July and takes a sneak peek at what we can expect going into August. So let's start by taking a look back at the month of July. These are the daily departure from normal temperatures in July for the Grand Forks Airport. The red bars represent days that were warmer than normal, and the blue bars represent days that were colder than normal. As you can see, the first half of the month was fairly warm, while the second half of the month had a cold spell. This is another way to look at the July Grand Forks Airport daily temperature data. This time, daily highs are shown at the top of the red bars, and daily lows are shown in blue at the bottom of the bars. The highest temperature at the Grand Forks Airport was 92 degrees that occurred on July 7th. Not surprisingly, this coincided with the only heat advisory that has been issued so far this summer, and this is shown here on this map in red. Taking a look at the hottest temperatures from July across the area, we can see that Fargo also hit 92 degrees. In terms of the coldest temperature at the Grand Forks Airport, this occurred on July 17th and was a chilly 47 degrees. But this wasn't the coldest temperature in the area, with some areas getting down to the low 40s. Fargo ended up dropping down to 46 degrees on July 27th, which tied its record low. Taking a look at minimum temperatures for July across the region, we can see that eastern North Dakota stayed slightly warmer than northwest and north central Minnesota. In summary, Grand Forks and areas of northwest Minnesota actually ended up being just slightly above average for the month of July, while some locations in uh, eastern North Dakota ended up being just slightly cooler than normal. Now let's switch gears and take a look at precipitation. As you're all well aware, we've had many thunderstorms over the month of July, and this can cause a lot of variability from location to location in terms of precipitation amounts. Grand Forks and Park Rapids received the most with over 4 inches of rain, while Devil's Lake missed out and ended up with less than 1 inch. But speaking of thunderstorms, here's a chart that shows how many severe thunderstorm and tornado warnings were issued during the month of July. If you recall, the first half of the month of July was fairly warm, and this corresponded well with, with a higher number of severe and tornado warnings issued. And as we headed into the second half of the month, things cooled off and corresponded with a decrease in the number of severe thunderstorm warnings. The majority of the warnings were actually issued on July 8th when we had two rounds of severe thunderstorms come through the area, one in the morning and again in the evening. Another active severe weather day was July 4th, which saw eight severe thunderstorm warnings and two tornado warnings. Most notably, the July 4th storms featured a large Boeing thunderstorm complex. This tracked from west to east across the area, causing widespread wind damage. As we head through the summer, you may have been noticing some changes to the crops across the region. These changes can be seen very clearly in satellite imagery. This first satellite image is from July 5th and notice all the shades of dark green across the area. Now let's jump forward to July 27th, where you can see a lot more brown starting to show up. These white areas are obviously clouds, but what about the shades of brown? Many of you farmers will likely know what that is. These are actually maturing small grain crops, but in addition to the shades of brown, there are a lot of different shades of green. Let's take a look at what each one of these is. We have potatoes, sugar beets, soybeans, corn, and of course canola, which can be seen here by the brighter shades of green. Now let's take a sneak peek at what we can expect for the month of August. As we head through August, we can expect our daily normal temperatures to slowly decrease throughout the month. In addition, we'll typically see less precipitation compared to the month of July. And unfortunately, we'll also be losing daylight as we head towards the winter. But just because we're getting a little bit cooler and losing daylight doesn't mean that we can't still see a lot of rain, severe thunderstorms, and maybe some really hot days. This is the one month outlook from the Climate Prediction Center. As you can see, all of North Dakota and Minnesota is in the white area. This means that we have an equal chance of seeing above or below normal temperatures. And looking at precipitation chances, Again, we're in the white areas, which means we have an equal chance of seeing above normal or below normal precipitation. And finally, congrats to Heather Morey for taking this great photo of the Roseau Fair, which won our Photo of the Month contest. 
Be sure to send in your photos and maybe you will be our next winner. And this concludes our weather and climate briefing for the month of July. Thanks for listening and be sure to tune in next month.